Hello and welcome back to another GCC revision video. Now guys, word on the street is the Macbeth 2024 exam question may well be on the theme of betrayal. I have received numerous DMs, numerous comments on both TikTok and YouTube from a lot of you saying, please, if the theme of betrayal comes up, what could I talk about? So guys, in today's lesson and in the series of videos that will follow this week, I'll be going over all the key texts in the Literature Paper 1 and Paper 2 exams that you're going to be sitting in three weeks time from today and showing you guys how to craft a perfect response for certain key themes that a lot of you guys think might come up in the 2024 exams, okay? And guys, of course, do not forget, and I've mentioned this already, that next week, I will be going over Macbeth and how to write a full mark model response in your exam two weeks before the GCSE Literature Paper 1 exams. So make sure you sign up for that one-off class next Monday. However, let's get to it. The theme of betrayal. Let's say this question comes up. You're asked to discuss how the theme of betrayal is demonstrated within Macbeth. Happy days because these are the main points that you should include in the perfect Macbeth essay on the theme of betrayal. Now guys, remember that as I always say in all of my videos, any perfect response, Macbeth, Inspector Calls, whatever, must always begin with a thesis statement. In your introduction, you must talk about what message Shakespeare is trying to impart when it comes to this key theme, the theme of betrayal. So what can you say if you're discussing the theme of betrayal if that comes up in your GCSE exams in three weeks time? Always make it clear that Shakespeare uses the tragedy of Macbeth to demonstrate how the lust for power and ambition is what leads to betrayal. Remember that Macbeth, Lady Macbeth's characters and the witches serve as really, really critical and vital characters who demonstrate how the lust for power and this greed for ambition leads to betrayal. Remember that, of course, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth both desire to subvert their position on the natural hierarchy in order to become king and queen and the witches exploit this lust for power. They take advantage of it, okay? They plant the seeds of ambition in Macbeth's mind, and this drives him and Lady Macbeth to commit all of these murders, okay? So, of course, you've got the death of the King uh, of King Duncan, death of Banquo, and, of course, the death of Macduff's family. It's all of this that's driven primarily by this lust for power, okay? So Shakespeare is obviously saying that it's a terrible thing to be ambitious. It's a terrible thing to want to go above your position on the natural hierarchy because all this will do is inspire this spirit of betrayal. You're going to become a corrupted individual once you become ambitious, okay? So that's your thesis statement. Remember that Shakespeare uses this tragedy to illustrate how this desire for power is what leads to betrayal. Now, your first perfect paragraph on this theme must, of course, focus on Macbeth. Remember that a really important observation you need to really make clear in your first paragraph after your thesis statement in your introduction is the observation that betrayal drives all the tragic chain of events that occur. In fact, make the observation that this play, so Act 1 and Act 5, right, it starts and ends with a thane killing the king. In Act 1, the Thane of Cordell, Macbeth, kills King Duncan. And in Act 5, the Thane of Fife, Macduff, kills King Macbeth. Make sure you make that observation, okay? And, of course, remember to tie it to the idea that the lust for power led Macdonald, okay, the previous, the first Thane of Cordell, who causes this entire war that starts the play. And, of course, Macbeth, this lust that they had for power leads to them betraying King Duncan, okay? So Macdonald betrays him, doesn't kill him, but Macbeth successfully does so. However, this lust for power is also exploited by the witches who lead Macbeth, of course, to act on this lust and this desire. He becomes King Macbeth. But what happens to Macbeth at the end? The witches end up betraying him and then he's murdered by Macduff. Macduff doesn't do any betraying. However, he is the one that ends up slaying and killing Macbeth, okay? And remember, these are the quotations you need to include if you are making a discussion, a really powerful discussion, and framing this idea that all the tragic chain of events are led and guided by betrayal within Macbeth. The first quotation, of course, highlights the first scene of Cordor, okay? So the captain 
In Act 1, Scene 2 talks about this merciless McDonald. He becomes merciless because he is really driven by this ambition for power, okay? And equally, of course, Macbeth realizes that he has this capacity for betrayal within him. The witches tell him, hell Macbeth, that shall be king hereafter. What does this do? Especially once he's made Thane of Cordor and one of the prophecies already comes true. He recognizes that he has this hidden lust for power because he describes his black and deep desires, okay? That's the second quotation to mention in support of this point. Equally, Macbeth realizes, okay, so him and Lady Macbeth start talking about the prophecies and Lady Macbeth really influences him to kill the king and he considers his vaulting ambition. His, in this soliloquy, he mentions specifically that King Duncan is here in double trust. We can see from this quotation that Macbeth feels incredibly guilty. He does want to become king. However, he realizes to become king, he's going to have to betray King Duncan, who has been such a good and loyal king to him, and of course, to all his subjects in Scotland. And the fourth and final quotations would be, talking about how Macbeth, his betrayal leads him to become the tyrant, and by Act 5, okay, this is after Macduff kills him, he is described using this really powerful metaphor, the butcher. Why are you using these quotations? You're using these quotations to illustrate and to demonstrate the idea that this lust and desire for power corrupts, okay? And it leads to Macbeth becoming, going from this celebrated general to becoming a butcher, to becoming a tyrant, okay? And with this first paragraph, when you're talking about how betrayal drives the tragic chain of events, you want to tie this first point that you discussed to the theme of ambition. Remember that Shakespeare uses this idea and this notion of betrayal to demonstrate how ambition can be quite corrupting. In fact, wanting to be ambitious, wanting to be more powerful than you currently are, leads you to then think about and to plot and scheme on how you can betray others who are in your way in order to become powerful, okay? So that's the first perfect response you need to write about if you're considering the theme of betrayal. Talk about the fact that it starts, the play starts and ends with a great betrayal, okay? And of course, it also starts and ends with the death of two kings. Now, your second paragraph, your second grade nine paragraph, would be now mentioning the role of the witches, okay? Now, the witches are very, very important because they betray Macbeth. They deliberately plant the seeds of ambition in his mind, okay? They're the ones who appear before him in Banquo. They tell him, hell Macbeth, you're not only currently gonna be, you're not only currently Thane of Glamis, but also you're gonna be Thane of Cordor and eventually king. This plants the seeds of ambition and this desire for power in Macbeth's mind. And of course, they also, once Macbeth writes to his wife, telling him about the prophecies, they indirectly intensify Lady Macbeth's desire for power, okay? So not only do they spark Macbeth's Hamasha, which is his ambition, but equally they intensify Lady Macbeth's desire to become powerful and to also see her husband becoming king, okay? Now, it's really important to mention the fact that once the witches plant these seeds of ambition, both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth act on these prophecies, okay? So they end up um, killing the king, Macbeth himself kills the king. Then Macbeth hires murderers to kill Banquo, his best friend. And of course, also Macbeth hires murderers to have Macduff's family killed, all of which is a consequence of the witches firstly prophesying that he's going to be king. And before Macduff has, uh, or rather before Macbeth has Macduff's family killed, the witches in that foreseen one prophesy and they tell him, look, beware Macduff. And that's what causes him to have his family killed, okay? And remember that the witches betray Macbeth because they deliberately speak in half-truths. In fact, when you're talking about the witches and the role that they play in betraying Macbeth, you want to mention the fact that they speak in equivocations. In other words, they speak in riddles, they speak in half-truths. They never lie to Macbeth, okay? Never say that the witches lie to Macbeth. But what they do, they don't tell him the full truth. And then based on just a half-truth, Macbeth acts and this causes chaos in Scotland, okay? So they disrupt the natural chain of events and the natural order by having the, kill, uh, the king killed. And then what this leads to is not only the chaos that ensues in Scotland, but ultimately the death of Macbeth. And the quotation that illustrates this and the, the, the fact that the witches deliberately betray Macbeth is of course what they say to him, okay? They say, hell Macbeth ellipses king. And also they plant further divisions between Macbeth and Banquo by saying, lesser than Macbeth and greater, okay? So this oxymoron, of course, is now showing that Banquo's kids will be king and this drives a wedge between Macbeth and Banquo, sealing Banquo's fate eventually. But also remember that by act five, 
once Macbeth realizes the witch's betrayals, okay, so he realizes the witch has actually deliberately betrayed him because now he's about to die, he himself says, be these juggling fiends, these devils, no more believed. What do you need to mention following on from this observation? It's really important for your AO3 to mention the contextual observation that Shakespeare deliberately had the witches betray Macbeth to demonstrate to his Jacobean audience never to trust the supernatural. In fact, King James himself wrote a book called Demonology, which basically said the same thing, okay? The witches can't be trusted and he himself was very paranoid that he would be overthrown due to the influences of witch-like women, okay? Now your third paragraph should draw a contrast between these two points, okay? So the first two points are, you've got Macbeth, whose betrayal drives a tragic chain of events, and your second paragraph is of course to do with the witches who deliberately betray Macbeth. However, your third paragraph should contrast this with the consequences of Macbeth, or rather the consequences of betrayal, okay? In other words, mention and discuss how betrayal sparks guilt within both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth and this guilt is evident through the hallucinations that they have. Shakespeare is also trying to show that once you betray somebody else you're now going to be haunted by these supernatural hallucinations okay and specifically of course before Macbeth kills the king he feels super guilty until he starts hallucinating and seeing this bloody dagger and this is where we've got a soliloquy where he asks is this the dagger I see before me? Equally Macbeth once he has had Banquo killed, he becomes really paranoid. And then he starts seeing the ghost of Banquo sitting in his seat where he should be sitting during his coronation. And finally, Lady Macbeth in Act 5, Scene 1, hallucinates and sees spots of blood. She finally realizes all the terrible actions she's committed. And this leads her to lose a sense of reality. And the point that you want to make here is hallucinations are used as a motif by Shakespeare to show that both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth's sense of guilt becomes so powerful after they've engaged in this series of betrayals that they end up losing a grasp on their reality. Meaning, this paragraph, you need to tie it to the theme of guilt, okay? So Shakespeare uses this theme of guilt to illustrate how these betrayals have really dire consequences on both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth before their eventual downfalls, okay? So that's really it when it comes to writing about the theme of betrayal in Macbeth, okay? Make sure you obviously always start any essay on betrayal with this really powerful thesis statement. Then in your first paragraph, talk about how the play starts and ends with betrayal. Your second paragraph should be, of course, talking about the witches themselves and how they catalyze this tragic chain of events by betraying Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. And of course, finally end with talking about the consequences of betrayal. Thank you so much for listening and I hope this helped.